In this video, we're going to show you how to set up data logging in the F4T. Data logging can be ordered with or without the file encryption capability. In this video, we're going to show you how to set it up using the file encryption. From the home page, press main menu. If you've ordered data logging, a data logging icon will appear. Pressing that icon takes you to the data logging menu. In this menu, start allows you to toggle between starting and stopping the data log. Annotation, if you want to enter a type a custom note, you can do that by pressing the annotation key. Log data points, this will show you the list of parameters that have been selected to data log. Select data points, this is where you can go in and pick and choose which parameters you want to be a part of the data log record. Setup. This will be all the settings for data log except for the parameters and the file transfer information. In the last icon is where you can go in and set up automatic or manual data log file transfers. So let's begin by entering the setup menu. In this list view, the first parameter is logging status. This simply indicates whether or not the product is recording or not recording. File name is the second parameter. If you want to give a specific name to the data log file, you can type it in here. The default will be the word log, followed by date and time. Also, if data logging is set to run automatically as part of a profile instructions, the file name will be set to the profile name, followed by date and time. Log to. You can log to internal memory. We have 80 megabytes of internal memory available, or you could log directly to a USB memory device plugged into a host port. Log interval. This is where you can set the frequency for data logging. You can record as fast as 0.1 second with fixed increments all the way up to 60 minutes. File type, there are two different file types you can choose. You can choose encrypted, which is a protected file, or .csv, which is an open file type. Your third option is to choose for both files to be created as part of the data log record, encrypted and CSV. Available logging time memory. I mentioned we have 80 megabytes of internal memory. It shows you how much memory is still left, as well as the next parameter expressing it in hours, how much available time is left, 264 hours. So if I'm going to be logging, does that look to be enough of what I need for memory? If not, I can go back into the log interval, and it is a dynamic setting where I can slow down how fast I'm recording, change it to one minute, and you can see now my available logging time in hours is stretched out to almost 8,000 hours. File size limit, this is in megabytes. This is the maximum file size. You can choose a range anywhere from one megabyte to 20 megabytes for your maximum file size limit. This comes in handy later if you're needing to email or use it in certain PC programs. Um, if you were logging 80 megabyte files, uh, that can slow down some systems and, and have trouble sharing that over email. So file size limit is uh, a way to uh, easily move files around later, as well as memory full action. So if I've consumed all 80 megabytes of internal memory, your options would be stop data logging, or I could choose overwrite. And what overwrite will do is it will manage your file size in a first in, first out orientation. So it will continue to data log, but overwrite the, the first file or the eldest file first. So that can use, this, this parameter can be used in conjunction with file size limit. So if my file size limit in this case was set to 5 megabytes and I have 80 megabytes of internal memory, 
uh, you can see I could always maintain 75 meg of files and kick out 5 megabyte at a time. So that completes the data log setup. Now what I want to do is select which parameters I want to be part of the data log record. So select data points. Options, you can choose to log up to 128 different parameters at a time. Your categories are your analog inputs, your process values, set points, power, alarm, limit, digital inputs and outputs, your soft keys, timers, counters, logic, math, compare, linearization, and some profile information. These categories may or may not appear depending on your configuration. So when I'm going to choose the data log, I'm going to data log channel 1 sensor, channel 1 set point, and channel 1 heat power. Go into analog input, and there's my channel 1 temp sensor. In the F4T you can give parameters custom names. So these are names that I've created. Uh, the names in your product may differ than what I've created. So I'll choose yes for the channel 1 temp sensor. Process value does overlap with analog inputs. Process values can be the same as analog inputs or they could be a combination of two analog inputs. And it could be set to averaging two analog inputs as the process output value. Or if I'm doing wet dry bulb for humidity, I could have one analog input for the temperature, another analog input as the wet bulb, and then the output of that process value being percent RH. So I've already picked the sensor for channel 1 temp. Let me continue with the set point now was the second thing I wanted to pick from channel 1. And then the heat percent power. Channel 1 temp heat power. All right, press done. So that's what I wanted to pick. I'm done selecting. Now when you're all done, before you start the data logging, you might want to verify what I've picked. So this is where you can go into log data points and see a summary of what I've selected. So confir confirming what I've done, channel 1 temp sensor, channel 1 heat power, and channel 1 set point. All right, so now I can start data logging. And you can also get confirmation. You don't have to go into the setup page to see the uh, status. There's also a REC record icon at the top with a green indication that we're data logging. If I wanted to type in an annotation note, I can press here. Uh, for instance, maybe I want to enter a you know job number or a customer number. I can do that. And when you hit enter, it will be date and time stamped into the data logging record. You could type in the note at the beginning before you start data logging. And then when you hit start, that annotation note will go in the very first logged interval of that data logging record. OK. I'll go hit stop. Uh, notice that when I did hit start and stop, um, my select data points icon disappeared. So while you are data logging, uh, you're not able to go in and actively turn data log parameters on and off. Now if I created an encrypted data log file, you can use Watlow Composer PC software to create a decrypted file. Let's take a look at what that looks like on a PC screen. This is Composer PC software. This is free software available from our website. Here if I want to look at decrypted files, I can click on the dashboard, data logs, and then decrypt log file. Now what I've done is I've transferred the data log from internal memory onto a memory stick and I have that plugged into my PC. Click on here's my USB drive. Here's my folder for my data log records. And then here I can see the name of the file log, the default name log, followed by date and timestamp.
with it being an encrypted type. So I'll click on that. And now you can see it's creating a CSV version replica of that encrypted file. Hit save. And I can go back out into that thumb drive. And I can see now I have a .csv version. So if I want to look and see what a data logging record file looks like for what I've created, here's the date. Second column is the time. Notice I was logging in one second increments. There's the temp sensor values. There's the percent heat power values. And there's the set point value going down. I did an enter an annotation note, job 3811. You can see when I entered that, that was date and time stamp when I hit enter. Again, we've created another video on how to do automatic and manual data log file transfers. I'd encourage you to check out that video. There's other videos and other supporting F4T information at www.watlow.com forward slash F4T.